Welcome to Fire to Inspire. I am your host, Angel Yasmin. You are listening to Next 411 on IBNXRadio.com. Our goal is to inspire you to ignite your passion and purpose. We will direct you for greater happiness, love, relationships, health, and fulfillment. Let's focus on your superpowers, values, core beliefs, and help determine what's important for your next chapter in life. All right, it's getting real hot up in here. Let's fire away. Angel Yasmin, and thank you for tuning in each week on Fire to Inspire every Thursday from 1 to 2 p.m. on IBNXRadio.com. All right, so dear diary, I discovered meditating. I discovered meditation and what it all entails. I have always been curious about the good Lord's way. You know, I feel like I'm Nicodemus in the Bible. If you ever know that story, my dad, I actually called him not too long ago, late at night, because I just needed my daddy time and I need to hear from my dad. And he was like, go read this scripture. And I read about the guy in the Bible (laughs) called Nicodemus. And Nicodemus was a man of so much wisdom. He was so wise and he was a great teacher of the Jews, but he was a Pharisee. But he had a lot of questions about Jesus's way. Now, I'm sorry I'm kind of starting a little, you know, heavy right now, but, you know, this really made me laugh when I was reading it because it felt like I was reading about myself, and I was like, dang, you know, I hate when my dad is right. I hate when he's like, yeah, you need to do, you need to, you need to read the word a little bit more so you can understand and clarify your life. So when I was reading about Nicodemus, like, he was a know-it-all. Like, he knew everything. He was very wise. He was very brilliant. I mean, he had a really good gift of knowledge and, you know, all this wisdom that he had. But he had to be born again. And what does it mean to be born again? To actually know Jesus' way and, like, act his way and do the things that he did. Don't look at it like, oh, my God, it's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Like, look at it in a very simplified way that if you actually follow what he does, it'll make your life a little better. I mean, he's actually the only man in mankind that just kind of, just spelled out what love was all about. His actions was all love. Everything, every decision that he made was all in love. But meditation has transformed my entire life. And I was just like Nicodemus. I was very curious about Jesus' way. I'm curious about who he was. And yes, I had questions on what he was to us as humans. But at the same time, I wanted to be like him. I wanted to make sure that I'm treating my neighbors the way I want to be treated. And look, we're in, we're in a very trying time. We are in a very time where a lot of people are being easily offended. We can't say nothing to nobody. Everybody's got an attitude. We can't really, you know, come together on the same page because everybody has their own. Everybody knows it all. You know, and guess what? It's time to be empathetic. I am going to preach that word all year long. I feel like we need to be a little bit more empathetic on each other and how we feel. And once we connect with each other humanly and not just all about us, about about self and get away from ego and think outside the box, now we can go forward and treating each other in a very loving, kind, empathetic way. So call it what you want. Meditation has really changed my life. And, you know, it keeps me balanced within. It actually helps me keep a peaceful mindset. And even if I face difficult times, I'm not responding the way I used to respond. Look, I used to be the main one that would cuss people out, go off in a, in a frenzy because I didn't know how to be in self-control. I didn't know how to control my attitude, even though I thought I was the kindest person. You could be the most kindest person in the world, but if something sets you off, you have those triggers. What do you do? What would Jesus do is the question. So meditation is an amazing way to free your mind. Forget about those daily anxieties, those stresses that we go through on a daily basis and focus on mental relaxation. I think that we're moving so fast. We are just going so fast and all we're worried about is getting the house, getting this, doing that, building our careers, building our marriage, building our relationships, just showing people that we have it all together. But we need to slow down. We need to calm it down. 
And we have to become a passive observer of one's thoughts, of one's feelings, of one's emotions. Tap into your inner spirit. It's a process of focusing on an object for a prolonged time. But just like anything, meditation takes a lot of practice and it takes discipline. So the big question is, what does the Bible say about meditation? I know y'all are like, oh, my God, Angel, what do you have us doing at this event tonight? Tonight I have an event where we're going to go over the benefits of CBD first, the first hour, and then we're going to go into couples meditation for Valentine's Fun. But at the same time, my heart was kind of crying out for couples because I've been hearing people emailing me, texting me, calling me for advice about it, relationships. And I'm going to just be honest with you, relationships are not easy. But I couldn't live without my husband. I could live without him, but I, I don't want to. So I want to learn how to get along with him. I want to put my needs aside sometimes and, and figure him out and vice versa. He's always tending to my needs. So how can you tend to each other's needs in a time of difficult times and relationships? Now, this is the week of Valentine's Day. And I know that we all want to, you know, talk about the flowers, the roses, and we want to act like everything is all, you know, great and fine and dandy. But really, we need to get to the root of it all. And that is the attitude of it all. How, how, how are you responding to your partner in life? Whether you're married, whether you're in a relationship, whether you're, you know, you're, you're working on your job. Relationship is relationship. You have to deal with people every day, day in and day out. So how can you make yourself better? How can you make better choices on how you react to certain things that you may not understand or offend you? Because we're just in that time right now. Everything's so sensitive. Everything is sensitive. So we can't just hide from the world. I tried that in 2019. It's not realistic. So we got to learn how to deal with each other. And with this introspection, you can forget the importance of living righteously and following the lessons of the Bible. So I want to kind of give you a couple of scriptures before I introduce you, my, introduce you to my guest. But, oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. Your commands are always with me and make me wiser than my enemies. I have more insight than all of my teachers, for I meditate on your statutes. And that's Psalms 119, 97 through 99. And then we got, but when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Matthew 6 and 6. Now I'm going to stay right there. What does it mean to, to do things in secret? Not to pray against your fellow neighbors because there's people out there that will pray against you. They will talk against you and even their thoughts are so big about you it can move some mountains. But I want you to be like Jesus. I want you to understand that I'm not trying to be preachy here. But I am trying to better my life because I want to be a light unto others. And I want you guys to start being a light unto others. It's time to become a little bit more mature in spirit, in our energy, in our vibes. Because people are hurting. I will say this again. People are hurting. And even yourself. We can just say all of us are hurting in certain areas in our lives. And we just got to be a little bit more sensitive. And when you meditate, I feel like when I meditate, I'm a lot more clear. I'm understanding of other people's feelings. I'm a little bit more conscious on how I want to treat that person because I want to be treated well too. We got to learn that this is not a world by yourself. You're in a world full of people, full of energy, different spirits, different vibrations, whatever you want to call it. But I had to bring it up because a lot of my audience are Christian based and I'm trying to figure out, you know, Jesus, his practices, he meditated day in and day out. Why aren't we doing the same thing? You may not believe in Jesus, but he was the only one again in history, in mankind, to perfect love. That's some powerful stuff. He's the only way because he's, in only, he's only the perfect peace. Like, he's the only perfect peace that I have found lately in my life. And I'm very proud of it. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in him. That's Psalms 104.34. And then I'm going to read one more that just kind of stuck to me. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture. 
to preaching and to teaching. Doesn't mean everybody got to go out and preach. Doesn't mean everybody got to be, because I ain't going to be nobody's preacher. I'm just going to do me. I'm going to be me. I'm not giving God any ideas, but at the same time, I just want to make sure that we understand the word and how he practiced his walk with people. How is he able to connect with sinners and the crooks and the high people, the middle people, the low people? It doesn't matter. Everybody's equal though. If you start looking at that, you will start loving in a different way. But back to the scripture, do not neglect your gift. Your gift is love. You're supposed to love your fellow neighbor, which was given you, given to you through prophecy when the body of elders laid their hands on you. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. Drop the mic. 1 Timothy 4 and 13 through 15. I love it. This changed the way it changed the game. It just changed the way I thought about people. You know, sometimes we can be selfish. Sometimes we can think about ourselves more than we can think about others, even in our marriages, even in our relationships, even when our loved ones, our families, we always think about, oh, it's about me, 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 me. But it's not about you. It's about everybody. So here we are. I have a very special guest by the name of Camelia Felton. And you know what? I really love my girl Mimi. I'm going to call her Mimi. She's also known as Mimi. <laughs> How you doing, Mimi? I am wonderful. Oh, my God. I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much oh. for having me. Well, thank you so much for blessing us with your energy and your presence. And I don't think I could have thought of anybody else better to do this event that we have going on tonight. So thank you so much for coming on today so we can, you know, spread the good news. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So tell people who you are and, you know, what you do every day. Okay. So my name is Camelia, a.k.a. Mimi. I am, my first passion and love is kids. So I'm a certified kids yoga teacher. Yes. I am a meditation instructor yes. and a Reiki practitioner. Yes. And I'm currently working on getting my adult certification to teach adults yoga. Oh, wow. I started to get a lot. I need help too. I need help yes. too. So you gotta have to, you have to help the parents if you're going to help the kids. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So I, my main goal and passion is to go out into the world and just teach people that everything you need is within you. Yes. We don't have to, you know, go to drugs or alcohol or mm -hmm. you know, all these other things. Yes. Everything we need is right. in us. And so just giving people the tools that they can use to find that, that peace and get back to center. Now, Mimi, I haven't known you very long. I know you through another mutual friend of mine, but I feel like I do know you. I feel like I'm so tied to your spirit and your energy. And I, when I experienced your way of doing things, the meditation that I came to your class one time, it changed my life. I haven't been, in, I haven't been the same since. It balanced me in a different way. I think I expressed that at that time because we were kind of opening up to each other. But what inspired you to pick this profession? Oh, wow. Um, just going through my own trauma and trials and tribulations. As a little kid, I always knew that I was meant to help people heal, that I am a teacher. Um, my parents knew it. I ran from it for a really long time, though. Wow. Because I'm like, no, that's, that's not my responsibility. What did they know? What did they know? That I was meant to teach. My dad used to say to me all the time, you're going to teach. You need to be a teacher. I'm like, wow. no, I want to be an interior decorator. I want to decorate. <laughs> like, Aren't okay. we hard-headed at that yes. age? We're and so hard-headed. <laughs> <laughs> and just fast forwarding, you know, being a mom and being around women, especially women of color, I just found myself always, girl, let's try this or let's do this or you don't have to do it that way. There's a better way. Come on. So, you know, just finding that, you know, my passion and my purpose is truly helping people while I was healing in the process. Yes. Um, and life. Life will show you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. It will show you quick, fast, in a hurry. It that will. pain is real. People are really struggling with pain. Like suicide is at an all-time high. Ooh. You know, yes. um, addiction is at an all-time high. Talk about it. Because people yes. don't know what to do. They don't know where to go. They don't know how to cope. They don't know how to cope. They don't know how to cope anymore. And it's like so sad. Yes. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm, when I say they... I experienced it too. Let's just be yeah. real. Let's be real. Yeah. But, you know, I just know that now that I've started these practices, 
that we look at like it's history in the Bible or in history in the book, like, oh, that's too foreign for me. And I really want to open it up. I've talked about this several times on my podcast. And the reason why I keep talking about it is because I want to drill it into people that we might need to go back to the the basics, you know? So tell us, like, kind of walk us through your pain on some of the things that you went through it to make you just kind of, you know, surrender. Because when I'm meditating, I call it surrendering. Yeah, it definitely is a form of surrender. It is. And for me, you know, I grew up in the time where it was like pray, pray, pray. <laughs> just pray your way through it. And prayer works. Don't it does. Don't get me wrong. It does. Prayer it does. works. But prayer to me is when you're asking God or you're talking to God. Meditation is when God or the universe or whatever yes. you you know you feel as your higher power is speaking to you. That's it. So in order to hear, you have to be quiet, mm. right? You have to like literally concentrate and focus. Yes. And so when I was going through some extreme pain in my life. You know, I was praying and I, Lord, please, please get me out of this. Just begging, and, begging, you know, the whole begging time. and <laughs> nothing was really changing. Right. And one day I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to surrender. And I sat there Here you go. and I closed my mouth. <laughs> I got chills for me because you're saying I, exactly what I really yes, did. Go ahead. I closed my mouth. And I just began, and it took a while. It really did because I wanted to ask God questions. Why am I going through this? You know, I had a daughter that, you know, was going through a lot. You know, I had a daughter that sat in jail for two and a half years for a crime oh she did not commit God. while being pregnant. Ooh. And I'm having to raise that, you know, bring that baby home and raise that baby. You know, and before that, going through a divorce. You know, my four children, our father, their father and I went through a divorce. I'd known him since the seventh grade. And, you know, that was like very close to death. That's the, the closest thing I've had to death. Yes. You know, and yes. then going through just all of these things, just one thing after the other one thing after the other I actually started doing yoga okay. and yoga kind of led me to meditation mm. but I just learned to calm my mind my body and my spirit and just really get back to center and like I said it took a while because sometimes in the process I would cry I would be angry yes. I still wanted to ask God all these questions why me why yes. am I going through this what did yes. I do wrong and just going through all the different emotions and you know but just learning to just sit sit in quiet, you know, and just sit in in peace and just allow everything that you're going through. Feel it. It's okay. Yes. It's okay to feel it. Yes. It's okay to own it. But just, just kind of sit with it for a second and just let it, you know, just wash over you in a way, if that makes sense. It does. It until does. Until you can find that peace, you know. So now when things come in my life, because they still do. Yes. Life is still going to do what it does. Mm -hmm. But I've learned to step back, take a deep breath, and really just look at what it is that is trying to teach me yes. and what is it for me to learn so that I can help others. So meditation has literally saved my life. Yes, And yes. I teach it to my friends, my children, um, and just... Everywhere that I go, I try to, there's a, there's a better way. There's a better way. Now, I love the fact that you went after the children first. And I think that's such a, like, you have a huge heart if you're doing that. Mm -hmm. What made you want to help the children before adults? What was your, what was your heart saying at that time? Well, I've always had a heart for children. I've always been around children. Like I said, being a mom, yes. my friends all, we all had children. I worked in uh, daycare centers, church. Just I've always been around children. Right. And it's like their heart is so pure. Mm -hmm. They're so mm -hmm. innocent. Mm -hmm. They're so open. They're so free. And if we could get, you're, you said going back to the basics. Come on. If yeah. you start with the babies. Maybe they won't have to go through some of the things that we've gone through. You know, if somebody had sat and told me to do what I do now at five <laughs> yes. or six, you know, I think that would have made me better equipped yeah. as a young adult mm -hmm. or even as, you know, um, a seasoned adult now, yes. you know. So kids just, they need it. 
because Amen. we're dragging them through this crazy world with us. Like they're tired, they're stressed out, school test, bullying, free, you know, bullying, and we don't free. take children serious enough. They're little bitty humans. They're little bitty humans, but they go through a lot of they shit do. too. I hate to say the word shit, but they but do. they go through a lot because I know. It was certain points in my life. I was like, is anybody paying attention? I'm going through some shit right now. <laughs> and ain't nobody listening. Yeah. Or it's nobody's like, they're listening. And I'm not saying that they don't care. Because I hate to use that word. Because family, we I have think, so much of our own stuff. There you go. That and we're dealing with. Exactly. Because yeah. I feel like family automatically cares. But they just don't know how to respond. Yeah. They don't know what to do in that situation. But, you know, I think that. The reason why I did this, because it's the day before Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. And I just love love. Mm -hmm. And I love relationships. I love to make sure that if I offend you, I want to make it right. I want to make sure, because I'm not perfect. I want to make sure that I, 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 I fix all and I tie up all the loose ends with all the human connections that I do make. I've always been like that. I don't think I'll ever change. And I don't want to. I don't want to change. I want to forever love people, love on people as mm -hmm. much as I can. But I want our African-American family to really tap into who they are as a person. And we have suppressed for so many years, over 400 years, we've suppressed our pain because we can't really step up. Back in the day during slavery, what we were doing, we were always doing what we were told to do, right. not what we were actually free to do. So I think that it's time to free ourselves and say, you know what, this is who I am, but can I be better? Can I do better? But at the same time, express myself without being whipped for it, without being backlash for it, you know, I, you know, for speaking up for who you are and your pains and your trauma, nobody's speaking up. Nobody's standing up and saying, you know what, I'm hurting. I'm hurting. This is hurting my feelings. This is really taking me to another level. But nobody's paying attention to you, right? So really, I had to learn how to say, you know what, I need to get to myself. I need to learn how to build my own relationship with God, whatever that looks like with the universe, whatever that looks like. I don't care. However you say it to me, it's all the same. Right. <laughs> okay, I'm really tired of the book. Oh, you know, it's God. No, whatever. It doesn't matter. God is all to me. And however you want to call it, he has a thousand names. But I just want us to focus on what's more important, and that's balancing our mental state. We don't want to talk about that, though. We don't want to talk about that we have some mental issues, yeah. that we need to face in the mirror and say, listen, I need to change this about myself. I need to change this anger. What will quiet your spirit down? So again, I just want to know, like, how has meditation, well, you already kind of explained that, but give us a little bit more detail on what you've gone through in the past with relationships and how it's kind of altered your life now. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so uh, yeah. I've, um, I've been married a couple times and... I see now in my life I had to go through those marriages yes. because it has made me the woman that I am. But being in the marriage that I'm in now, um, you even said yourself, it's not always about you. Right. Um, my very first marriage, I was really young. You know, I had mm -hmm. young children. And so I put everything into that marriage. Wow. And I lost myself. And you can't do that. In order to love others, you have to love yourself first. Yeah. So I became very angry and depressed and I felt lonely and I had all of this around me. Wow. I had a husband and, you know, he tried to be the best husband that he could. Of course. But I still felt empty on the inside because I hadn't learned how to love myself. Right. And then fast forward, went into another... <laughs> I get it. I went, Don't feel bad. I did oh, too. It's, it's I did funny. too. I went into another <laughs> marriage because I needed that security. I needed that that safe place because I had been with a man pretty much my entire adult right. life. And so going into that second marriage, you know, I went from one extreme <laughs> to the other. <laughs> and so I needed that marriage too because it showed me like, okay, Another person is not responsible for your happiness. Oh, come on, Will you Smith. have to be. Said it. Yes, you <laughs> have right. to be responsible for mm -hmm. your happiness. You yes. know, and I thought this person would make me happy. 
You know, yeah. I, my first marriage, I wasn't happy. No matter what this person did, I was never happy. Right. But it was not that person's responsibility. It's it not. was mine. It and is. so I made those men, in a sense, my God. Oh, girl, you better tell it. You know? Tell it. Tell yeah. the truth. And it's Come like on. really going through that and hitting rock bottom is when I realized, Camelia, you have to love Camelia first. And so looking in the mirror and really getting to the core, it was it was hard. It was ugly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was but ugly. it was the most beautiful thing that I've ever done in my life. And then I said to myself, these are the things that I desire for the person that God has for me. Come on. Come on. And when I tell you, oh my, God. <laughs> my husband came at a time in my life when most men probably would have ran the hell away. I am so <laughs> serious. Come on, come on, I had so much going on in my life, yes. not with me per se, but just the circumstances of what surrounded me. Yes. Every, you know, And so the very, our very first conversation, we met at a coffee shop, and I just... I put it all out there. I was like, look, this is what I have going on. This is what, you know, it is. But I'm a good woman. I deserve love. Yes. And I have a lot of love to give. And so if you're ready for the ride, you know, and I get all, like, emotional when I think about it. It's if you're okay. ready for this, we can start as friends. And wherever it goes, that's where it goes. From that day, um, we were never apart. Wow. We were never apart. And he has been there through it all, you know. Yes. Um, Even through your some of your transformations, oh right? Oh, my God. Tell people. Like, I don't think people want to. They don't want to shed don't really light know. on that. Yeah. Like, we always say, well, you need to be fixed before you get into a relationship. Oh. Honey, that ain't real. <laughs> that shit ain't even real. Come on. You're going to get triggers because you've been through so Girl. much pain, trauma, back to back. This this guy this almost said something else. <laughs> Trust me. This you know this jigger this jigger I almost said the other word because you just <laughs> you deal with so right. many people and so many different attitudes and so many different spirits that are not even like you. Yes. You know that you you fell in love with because because it was probably lust. Yeah. Let's be real, but you figured out that you probably stayed in it longer than you should have, and it traumatized you. It actually ruined you. So what happens when you get into a relationship? I don't care if you go three years without being in a relationship. That don't mean your ass is healed. Right. <laughs> All of a sudden, honey, you got to find Jesus for yourself. You got to find God for yourself, your Buddha, or whoever you looking up to. You got to find it. That's why I think religion is very important to a certain extent because it all keeps us in a certain, like a normalcy that we need to stay balanced because if we just act like we're out here running ourselves, we're just going to run around here rampant and crazy and no leader within our, like I, I can't, sometimes I get so deep I can't even explain to myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what I'm saying is religion, I don't like religion, but now I'm coming to, the, I want to go back to the basics. I want to go back because sometimes we are so far gone away from the word or away from our own practices that we grew up that really kind of made us who we are and made us whole. Okay. We lose that foundation that we were built on and we forget about who we are and what we were actually born to, you know, pursue. So some of us were born to do different things. We were called to do different things. My point is we got to go back to some of those things that we know works for us instead of ignoring the problem. Because what did I do when I went through my divorce? I was partying. I was doing all this thing. Okay, I've said that a thousand times, but you've got to face your reality and say, listen, I may not be the best woman for marriage right now. I know that you're looking for a relationship. You're itching for a relationship. You all online on Tinder, on Match.com, on Christian, what is it? <laughs> ChristianMingle.com. POF, Christ POF. Yeah. Honey, please get your life together before. And honestly, how can we do that? But we're gonna we're gonna take a break right now. And we're gonna talk about that when we get back. You guys don't go anywhere because we definitely have more to say. So stay tuned.
My people pray for peace and hope. Yeah, she will keep us close. What I feel is spiritual. Nothing about this typical. Speak the truth for love and hope. Let your inner bitches go. Free your mind, protect your soul. Feel the light. All the windows down. The spirit's up. Blow the flower out. And I ain't got time to be bothered when I'm living. All right, we are back and we are talking everything meditation today. Even though it's the week of Valentine's Day, I just want to bring our relationships back because I feel like there's an attack on marriages. There's an attack on any kind of relationship when you're working with people. It don't matter, family, all of the above. But I really didn't want to make Valentine's all about the balloons and flowers this year and being all lovey-dovey. Let's just tell the truth that, you know, we're going through some trying times right now, but we don't want to leave. We don't want to leave. We, we have some people in our lives that you know God sent you. But don't run that man away. Don't run that woman away being selfish. So we're going to go back to Camellia and talk about the benefits of meditation for couples. for couples. How can you, I loved how you kind of ended where you said, I had to go and find myself. I had to go love on myself. What did you do to, to, to love yourself again, to bring yourself back whole again? I just took the time to learn what brought joy to me versus trying to make somebody else happy. Mm -hmm. So just getting back to just the simple things like actually enjoying a meal <laughs> by myself Yes. Or a lot of self care, and people think self care is getting your nails done, getting your hair good, mm -hmm. your hair did. I mean, those are those are wonderful things, right? But actually, journaling, writing down my goals and my dreams, things that you know that I've had inside of my heart since I was a little girl, and just learning, you know, to say no. <laughs> that was very that's a big one because I've always been the type of person I'll help you, and I lack, you know. So just learning right. to have. Healthy boundaries. Good. That was a form of self-love for me. And just just getting back to who I was, yes. you know. Um, I love to be out and, and helping people and with my friends. Yes, and yes. And I still love to decorate, organizing. So just really finding the things that bring me joy. I even did dating for a while because I got married so young. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't really do the whole dating thing. So And I dated, like... For a couple of years, and it was so much fun. Oh, like yeah, I got yeah. to see, no, I don't like that. Yes, I like that. <laughs> and dating is not a bad thing. People just make dating. You you meet somebody, and you think, oh, we're dating. That's it. No. Mm. Dating is dating a couple people without the sex. Exactly. You know? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> because then that turns, a, that turns into something else. <laughs> But you know? <laughs> yeah, but just learning, you know, things yes, that that yes. you require and things that you will not tolerate or, you know, deal breakers. Yes. You know, I had to learn that. And mm -hmm. that was another form of self-love, you yes. know, because you'll meet someone. They're like, oh, my God, you're it. You're the one. But is that person yes. the one? And you'll get back in that trap again, mm -hmm. you know, of making somebody else happy. Right. So in finding my husband, I was true to myself. I knew who I was. And when we got together, we made each other happier. Yes. It wasn't about me making him happy, he making me happy. It was about coming together and enhancing the happiness each that other. we already had. Wow. And so it's a beautiful thing. It really is. I Does he it. get on my nerves? <laughs> yes. Hell yeah. <laughs> And do we but, get on their nerves? Oh, I Hell know yeah. I get on his nerves. 
Because I'm all okay, over the place. You too. know, and he's more kind of structure. <laughs> We're so creative. Oh. I think you and I have a lot in common because you are so like on the go. You always have any events and you yeah. love to be around people. You love your friends. Yeah. You know, your friends are your family. I love oh, how I you love and Janelle, like, oh yeah. my God, I just love Janelle. Shout out to Janelle today because yes. we love you, girl. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Thank oh, you for yeah. bringing us together. But, you know, her love for people, I mean, oh, yeah. it's just amazing. Like, yeah. she's a good person. So I love to be around people that are like-minded and have the, like, the same hearts. Because right. it's hard to find good-hearted people out here. It really is. But, you know, I was, I, I don't know, I feel like I'm called to the stress. People out there. A lot of marriages are under stress. A lot of pressure that... I think social media has created that we just have to keep up with the Joneses and we got to rush and do this. We got to rush and do that because so-and-so is watching our life. But honey, how can meditation be the glue? How can it bring y'all together once you figured out your own self-love and you've kind of enhanced each other, but things got to get rough sometimes. You can't always stay on a straight and narrow. How can meditation bring you together? In a relationship. It's so many benefits to first meditating by yourself. But when you meditate together, it just takes the relationship to the next level. Girl. Because it keeps you grateful. It keeps you grateful for first each other. Like it's a blessing to have another human being to love. And you have to stay in a space of being grateful and not taking that person for granted. Right. And just in the hustle and bustle of life, you know, we can get in a space where we start to take each other for granted. You know, so just coming together, and it's not something that you have to do every single day. If you just set a time, it could be once a week or, mm -hmm. you know, I think once a week is a good place it's to enough. start. Yeah, you it's can a do good twice place to a start. month, right. whatever, you know, whatever you but desire. Just, right, but yes. just coming back to a space and just showing gratitude for each other, I think it's a beautiful thing because it, it's simple mm -hmm. and it gets you back to the foundation of why you're together, if it's a pure foundation. Oh, and, it, and I'm only speaking of the ones that are really in a healthy situation, Right, but you're very passionate about each other like my husband and I are very passionate people he's passionate I'm passionate and there's mm. no really no in between <laughs> it's like, right there's no there's in between no in with me we are loving hard we're yeah. loving hard and, we, and then if we fuss hard we fussing hard you know right so we had to learn because we don't want to be without each other right. we are really healthy for each other like we are not that couple that oh my god they need to split up type right. shit it's not none of that right. but, so because I, I really don't think that anybody else could put up with me the way he does He's so patient, and he's really taught me how to relax. Yeah, you know, because I'm a high strong woman. I'm I'm very high demanding. Like I'm just ready to go. Like let's go, honey. I'm a party on wheels, honey. <laughs> so you know, <laughs> woo. <laughs> I am. And so it takes a hell of a man Aww. to deal with me. And I am grateful for him. I just want to say happy Valentine's Day right now mm. because he has shed light on what patience is all about. But, honey, I didn't know what patience was because mm. I had been traumatized. I had been abused in several relationships before yeah. him. So that means I became an abuser. And I had to learn how to bow. I hate that word. I hate the word that you must, um, what do you, submit, submit yourself. Oh, my God. Okay. My husband is a very empathetic person. I'm a very empathetic person. He's sensitive. I'm sensitive. So that's what makes us love each other the perfect way because we're always paying, paying attention to each other's feelings, no matter what you're feeling. Okay, mm -hmm. but it can be also a downfall because if one is up and one is down, it's like, oh, shit. Like, come on, man. I got something to do now. Come on. Get up. We got to go. Oh, yeah. We're on a high wave here. So what helped us is I got down on the floor. I was always stretched. His back was his lower part of the back was always hurting. So I kind of tricked him. <laughs> I said, babe, let's get on the floor and let's stretch. You know, we always he introduced me to guided meditation. He did. We would wake up in the morning, hold hands, lay on our backs, and we would actually do affirmations, oh. and we would repeat it. And so we kind of built our own future on our own mm -hmm. affirmations and our own beliefs in our own house. We weren't hurting anybody. We weren't chanting against anybody. The dark spirits out there, stop it. <laughs> come to the light. Come to the light. But, you know, <laughs> but at the same time, he taught me how to meditate. He taught me how to do affirmations and he taught me what law of attraction was 
you know, a lot of people, you know, don't take that word seriously, but it's real. It's, it's real. Like it's all up in the Bible on how to use your faith and activate your faith. But I don't think as Christians, I don't know what you are. I don't really care where you are. You know, I care because I know that you have a good heart. That's all that matters to me. But I just want us to learn how to be sensitive to each other's needs. Because once you start tapping into each other's needs, that's when you can come together on a foundation that's stable. You can, you can have so much shit coming at you. Because trust me, like Mimi said, life is going to come after you. Life, things, trials and tribulations are going to come into your relationship. The snake is going to come into the bedroom. Okay? But if you know that you have a relationship that's worth fighting for, I'm not talking about that shitty shit. I'm not talking about that shitty relationship, the one you know you should have been run away from a long time ago. But I'm talking about those ones that you know that person has your best interest at heart. And you got to fight. You got to learn how to be unselfish. Everything ain't, all about, everything ain't all about what you want. Everything ain't about what you need. But how can you come together and sit down and face each other? So one day, back to my story, I got my man on the floor and his back was hurting. And I said, let's stretch. And we, we turn on some music or <laughs> some kind of, it was a very relaxing type thing. <clears throat> but hun, we got on that floor and we started doing guided meditations and affirmations that say, look, I am prosperous. And I, and it was like some angelic voice in the back. I am prosperous and I am kind. I am love and all of these things. And honey, one thing turned into another. <laughs> Look, my bed is not defiled. So I can say what I want to say. Look, meditation brought us together again. We started having more fun in the bedroom. I'm mean, listen, we brought it back to life because we actually did something that was outside of our norm that actually brought some fun and a little fire into the relationship. Mm -hmm. Because even though you're in meditation on the floor with your partner, it can kind of turn into some something very sexual, intimate. Yeah, yeah intimacy. Talk about exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. It's a it's a deeper connection. There you go. And so and it's being vulnerable. Yes. You know, it is. and it's it something is. about being vulnerable to someone that you really truly love. Yes. It just and trust. Yeah. You it gotta just trust ignites yes. the spirits, mm -hmm. you know? And it's only gonna make for a beautiful expression of love, whatever yes. it leads to. Absolutely. You know, um, so it's something that simple, you know, I'll text my husband just throughout the day, you know, I am so proud of you. Oh, I love yes. you. Thank you. I appreciate you. Yes. You know, um, I know I'm getting on your nerves, but I hear you. <laughs> you know, just simple things like that. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it doesn't have to be this long, drawn-out, you know, thing. It doesn't have to be. My husband's not about the fluff. You know, he's it. really about, okay, it is what it is. Yeah. And so, you know, those are the, one of the things that keeps us connected. So when he comes home at the end of the day, we've been kind of, you know, going back and forth all day. So to say that, you know, that's kind of how meditation is. Those little connections, it, like when you're out and you're doing different things, you, you can't help but, you know, relish on those sweet moments. Yes. Like, I am kind. And it makes you think about, you being know, kind. being kind Consciously. to your mate. You yes. know, I am love, loving your mate or yeah. in any relationship, Absolutely. you know, your kids or, you know, this isn't just about relationships with your husband or your mate this is this even works with your kids it does family members you know are they just, putting it in school now yoga and meditation or it's getting there it's getting there it's getting there georgia is a little we're a little slow but we're getting there yeah. um and that's just one of the things we've we've lost connection yeah you know social media has made it where you don't have to touch you don't have to look in mm -hmm. each other's eyes nope you just say whatever you have whatever you have to we say. We think it's okay to just say to our own immediate families, happy birthday on Facebook. On Facebook. Or Instagram. I'm like, uh-uh. Right. Even though I might be busy that day, because we are all too busy, I think. I yeah. think we're too busy. Yeah. I don't know. Drilling a hole to our, our grave. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why we're doing all this. Sometimes yeah. I stop myself and like, why am I going so hard? Can I just slow down? Why am I driving yeah. so fast to the next destination? Because wherever I'm going... It'll be there. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, we, that's the thing. It meditation keeps you, just keeps, keeps you, you connected. Balanced. It yeah. keeps you balanced. It, and it makes you sit your butt, like you said, it slows you down. It does. When you're sitting there with your maid or, or whoever, where are you going? Where? <laughs> Why 
are you so mad? Why? We just need to calm down. Yeah. Oh, you you pay attention to your breath. Yes. You become in sync with your heartbeat. Yes. You know, and you just slow down, and you really start to think about the things that are important. Yes. And it's not that job. It's not that that car, or that house. It's that person that's right in front of you. Yeah. So You're right. it's it's a it's a beautiful thing. It really is. So and and tell the people how they can meditate. Like, what are some of the ways that they can do meditation, meditation. with their partner? Because I don't really I don't think there's a real one way to do meditation. Oh, of course not. There's yes. so many different ways. Mm -hmm. But if you want to start out, you know, just to start, you definitely want to be in a comfortable position. You don't want to have one sitting, one standing. You want to have where you both are very comfortable. That right. could be a seated position, if on the floor or chairs. I know everybody. You may not be able right. to get on the floor. So you just want to make sure both of you are comfortable. You can even lay down. You know how you said you and your husband lay in the bed, yeah, hold hands. We, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, whatever is comfortable for both of you because mm -hmm. you both want to be comfortable. Um, another thing is you may need like um, an object or something to focus on. So if you need like maybe a candle or... Um, what something else? Uh, music. Yes, or guided. Something or gui that's kind of yeah. guiding you. Make something. sure it's a good spirit. You know, yeah. something that's kind of. Because if it doesn't feel good, you need it's to turn not, it off. Right. Turn it. If it doesn't agree with your energy and it makes you right. uncomfortable, that main because everything that everybody puts up on YouTube is not good. Right. You have to be careful on right. what you're listening to and what you're training your brain to do. Right. And I'm very big on spirit. I'm big on what and people. Energy. There you go. And energy. There you go. Yeah, so that's important too. And once again, it, it it needs to be something that you both are comfortable with. You don't want to have something that one loves and the other one's like, "What is?" This? I know you're not gonna. So receive. it may be things you need to have a conversation about before, like right. you know, let's pick some music or let's pick you know a candle, a scent that we both like. Right. You can incorporate maybe some um, aromatherapy. Mm -hmm. You know, nice oils are really massages. good. Massages. Yeah. Massaging your partner. Yeah, oh my it's god, beautiful. It's beautiful, <laughs> and I love to get my massage. So. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. <laughs> I um, mean, that's all intimacy. That's yeah. like how to revive. Because I think that even like we don't have kids yet, but a lot of marriages die out. The flame goes out because you're so busy with the kids. You're pretty much putting them first, you know, and you're forgetting about each other. Each other. And so I think those little magic small moments mm -hmm. will just really build it back again. Like a, it'll rev it up again if you've lost it, you yeah. know, because everybody goes through a point where they're like, I don't want to have sex with you. I don't feel like having sex with you. I'm too busy to have sex with you. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just but, saying, you know, we have those moments where we, hell, it ain't about being busy. You may not feel like it because y'all might have went through a trying time. Yeah. I don't know what situation. Everybody has a different situation. It, it might have been something that you lost trust with. How do you build it again? By getting on the floor, by getting together wherever you are and connecting again. I think that that is such a huge thing when people actually do it. Don't don't think it's cheesy. I know y'all out here saying, ain't nobody finna do that, Angel. Is you crazy? We're not finna get on no flow and do all that hoopla. Well, listen, if you're not having sex, I think you should try it. <laughs> okay. It might lead to that. It's gone. It ain't gonna might. It's gonna lead there because if you're staring at each other and you just got out of the shower and you're, you know, you got on your little whatever cute little thing. Or you nothing. Ain't, or nothing, honey. Go <laughs> That's to, a good way to meditate. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's nasty. You nasty, Mimi. You nasty. I'm gonna try that one. But anyway. <laughs> you're so silly. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you gotta try different <laughs> things. You know, That's instead right. of going to try to go get a threesome, stuff that y'all, you know, that you know you're going to pay for later, I'm being real because there's some crazy people out here yeah. and y'all are allowing people to just take advantage of you, step all over you. If it's something that you're not comfortable with, do something else different. Do something different, yeah. you know, to bring it back together because all relationships don't stay the same. Right. After the honeymoon phase, read the book, The Five Love Languages. Hello, yes. it will explain why you are so gun ho about this person and you'll jump the the freaking mountain for this person, but then after a certain amount of time, you're like, whoa, why am I in this relationship? You wake up from your lust. <laughs> you wake up from you 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 see reality. The but honeymoon is over. The honeymoon is over. So what do you do <laughs> to keep it going? So tell them a little bit more about what else you do. You're a yoga instructor too, right? Oh and yeah. So tell us like how did you and why did you get into yoga? What's the history behind that? 
Same well, you thing. already same thing. Yeah, you already said that. Thing. But why is yoga so significant? Maybe I'll say that. Why is it important? Yoga for me, well, yoga simply is union. So it's bringing the mind, the body, and the spirit mm-hmm. together to create the best version of yourself. Right. So if you have the mind, you know, where you're doing your mindfulness, your meditation, and then you have the physical aspects of it where you're doing, you know, your stretching and you're right. making the body, you know, um, I guess more fluid breathing, it, breathing, yes. those are things of that nature and just your emotional state, you know, so it just brings your whole self, you know, we're spiritually, we're emotional, we're spiritual and we're physical. And if all those things are in harmony, you can only be a better version of yourself. That's right. You can't have this like bomb body, but your mind's not right. Ooh, come or on, you, Or your heart's not. I, I mean, I see it daily. Mm-hmm. I mean, dressed to the nines. Come on, bro. Everything is on point. On. But your heart's a mess. Yes. Or your mind is not right. Right. You know, so just putting all those things into alignment. Yes. And so yoga allows me to keep, you know, I'll be 45 years old next month. Where? Uh, yeah, in <laughs> March. <look> good. <laughs> and so yoga has helped me because mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm, I'm going to keep it real, I'm not a big gym girl not a lot of weight. Um, and I probably need to, that's another thing I'll get into that later, (laughs) but yoga keeps me, um, keeps my joints good, keeps me just in a good space for me. Right. You know, it keeps me, um, just in alignment with my body. I know when something hurts, you know, okay, maybe I need to stretch that a little bit more or maybe I'm overworking that. So Mm -hmm. it just keeps me in tune with my body yoga for me. And I can notice, you know, I feel better. Clothes fit better. You know, I may mm. not have lost a whole lot of weight, but, but I just... it elongates your muscles, I right? I just feel leaner. Yes, yeah, jeans yes. that used to be really, really tight. You know, I don't have to, like, suck in my stomach <laughs> and, and button them anymore. I can right. just pull them up and button them. And I think that attributes to me doing yoga. I do yoga just about every day, yeah. you know? And it's for... Yoga is for everybody. Yes, please you know? break that stigma. <clears throat> Please. Yeah, it's not for the flexible. It's not for the skinny. It's, it's not, not for, just for women. Right. It's not just for women. Right. It's not, you know, it's for people of color. Mm-hmm. It's, it's Yoga is for everybody. So that's why it's so important that I wanted, you know, to start with the kids all the way to 100. I do a senior citizens um, group every um, oh, first and third awesome. Tuesday. And it's the sweetest thing, yes. you know, to see them move in their body. Some of them, they haven't moved in years. Yeah. And they have all these ailments that if they would just move, <clears throat> they could get rid of. I just learned recently, if you learn how to breathe, mm-hmm. if you learn how to breathe, you can get rid of so many mm-hmm. pockets of bacteria mm-hmm. in your body by just simply learning the mechanism of breathing. breathing. And it can just kind of defog your brain mm-hmm. from all the shit that you're going through and all that mm-hmm. life that we're going through. It helps. So mm-hmm. yoga to me is a lot of breathing. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of discipline too. You have to really... You know, it's not always easy to stretch for me, but I love how I feel afterwards. Right. You know, it wasn't the easiest thing, but I love the outcome. That's what it's about. We want to be our best selves in 2020 because we're going to need it. We need a lot of strength. We're going to be going through a lot. Yoga meets you where you are. Yes. You know, um, and over doing it consistently, you get better. You may not be able to touch your toes. In the beginning. Yeah. But trust me, if you keep doing it, discipline, if you stay consistent yes. and do it, those hands will finally get to your toes right. or get to the earth. You know, um, there were things I couldn't do just a couple months ago. Yes. And it blows my mind when I do it now. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. Yes. Did I just do crow? Did <laughs> I just you. go into crow? Like, not even focusing on getting there, but right. the process has been so beautiful. Like I shocked myself, That's you know, good. That's and good. yoga is your practice. It's, Amen. it's for you, by you, you design the practice that you want. Don't look at Sally. Don't look at Bill. Don't look at Jethro. Don't look at Tyrone. <laughs> Focus on you. Yes. You know, and your journey. And Do what makes you happy. And I know that you, you also teach Reiki, but I don't, I want to take my, <clears throat> my audience slow. Even though I honestly know all about it, but I just want to take them slow. We're gonna give them, you know, we're gonna give yeah. them doses. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. But we'll talk about that another podcast with a sure. couple other ladies because sure. I know some other ladies that are really into it. But it'll be another day. Oh yeah. But I'll ask my last question: What ignites you? You know, what ignites the fire within you to do what you love every day? Oh my God. Um, when I wake up and I'm like, I have another day. When I open my eyes, it sets the intention to do what I love. And I ask God to guide me today to the people that I need to meet, to the experiences I need to have. You know, so I can write down my to-do list. <clears throat> Very rarely do I do the things that, I'm, <laughs> that I've put down. But I know when I go to bed at night, I've done what I'm supposed to do. Right. And that's what keeps me going. When someone says to me, you inspire me. Um, it's so funny, and it comes from the most unexpected places, the most unexpected people, you know, and I'm like, okay, I am doing something right, you know, so that brings me the most joy, um, and I'm still healing too, you know, we're all just a work in progress, We are, you know, mm-hmm. so as I heal, it is my goal, it is my responsibility to help others heal too. Because I firmly believe that heal people, you know, they often say hurt people hurt people. And they do. They do. <laughs> they do. But and they don't get heal together. people have the ability to heal people. Absolutely. So if we're com- if we're always healing, yes. the world eventually will be a better place. Yeah, we got to stop hurting each other we and do. start healing each other. You're hurting. I'm hurting. Let's sit down and let's unpack this hurt. And help each other heal. Stop saying, what's wrong with her? And she this and she that and he (laughs) this and he that. You are too. Mm -hmm. So let's help each other heal. That's it. Mimi, I don't know. No other way to put it. You did it just, that was good. Thank you so much for being on the show. I appreciate you. Let the audience know how they can find you on social media or online. Yeah. So um, my favorite platform is Instagram. And I am Mimi's Yoga Kids. You can find me on Facebook, Mimi's Yoga Kids. Um, Anywhere you can pretty much find me, it'll be Mimi's Yoga Kids. (laughs) (laughs) And look, I'm branching her out to the adult life. So, you know, but I just saw what she did. And I don't trust everybody to be over my marriage or over other people's relationships. Because you got to be careful what type of spirits are over you. So I just couldn't have thought of anybody else but you. Even though you you deal with kids. You dealt with me as an adult, and I know what it did to me. I know how it impacted me. So I can't wait to see what God unfolds for you in 2020 outside the kids. Like, it's going to be everybody. You're going to be tapping onto everybody, and you're so, like, diversified. I watch you. You're always with this person, Asian, Chinese. It doesn't matter. Mimi, you're there. So I cannot wait to see what unfolds for you in 2020. Thank you. I I appreciate you you and I love you so much. Thanks for having me. I love you too, baby. So (laughs) thank you so much, everybody, for joining us live today. Please come back next week, every Thursday from 1 to 2 p.m. right here. All right, it's getting real hot up in here because we are so fired up. (laughs) Ah, Peace out. Bye.